that you were able to join us in our other virtual field trips. So if you're looking for Old McDonald Farm, Old McDonald Farm is in Sackett Harbor and Sackett Harbor is in Jefferson County, which is not too far from Lowellville, um, very close to Watertown and it's there on Lake Ontario. Um, so for the last three weeks, we've been learning about the dairy industry from cone, um, from calves to cone. So our first week, we learned about calves. Um, second week, we learned about animal health. Our third week, milking. And today, we are going to learn um, about how that milk becomes ice cream. So, Miss Julia, thank you for having us. How are you? Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do on Old McDonald Farm? We have met Emma. And now we're meeting Miss Julia. Yes, thank you. Well, hi, everybody um, near and far. I know we have some people joining us from as close as like eight miles away and people joining us, um, you know, from 300 miles away. So thank you to everyone who is watching. Um, so my name is Julia and I'm the fifth generation here on our family farm. Um, my great, great grandparents started the farm about over 100 years ago. Um, and it's been passed down through the generations. So I farm now with my parents, uh, my brother and my husband here. Um, we have three components to our, our farm, North Harbor Dairy, which you visited, Old McDonald's Farm, and then Robin's Family Grain, where we grow all of our crops. Um, I've worked here at Old McDonald's Farm since I was three years old when my mom started the business. And she's taught me everything she knows over the years. Um, and as we've grown, uh, gotten bigger, and um, now today we're going to tour our ice cream operation, uh, which is one of the contributions that I've helped make uh, at Old McDonald's Farm. Um, so with that uh, being said, we wa also wanted to uh, mention how we decided to do the ice cream operation here. Uh, last year, um, we decided to go ahead and purchase our ice cream machine. And we were asked all of the time, uh, why don't you make your own ice cream? So we asked ourselves, why aren't we making our own ice cream? And so we purchased our ice cream making machine and it was 2020, it was the start of the pandemic and people just really went crazy for the local products. So we're gonna go through that process today. Um, before we do so, let me introduce you to Linda who's our ice cream operations manager. So she takes the recipes that we have. She comes up with recipes, we collaborate on them. And she gets all of our ingredients and um, is in charge of the ice cream making operation. So and then we, over here- As yeah, we sorry, go through go our tour, um, it, I'm sure there are gonna be tons of questions. If you and your class want to ask a question of our host or any of uh, our participants, please put it in the Q&A. Okay, perfect. And we have Ashley and Lacey. They are going to be our ice cream packers um, today. Once we get through the process of making the ice cream, the ice cream will come out of the machine and the girls will be packing it into our little containers. So we can go ahead and get started on our tour. So first, um, let's talk a little bit about our ice cream making machine. Um, this is it, made in the USA. This is a, a really popular type of machine. It comes out of Florida. Pretty simple as far as all of the um, parts. Not a lot of parts, but um, does what we need it to do. Um, we put uh, the liquid product in, and at the end, we get the frozen product out. So before we do anything, we have to sterilize the ice cream machine. And so we use a solution that is food safe called Sterachine. And we mix that up with water and pour that into the ice cream machine. And we only make ice cream here about once a week. So during the rest of the week, the ice cream machine sits idle. So bacteria can get into it um, while it's not being used or just pathogens in the air. So we go through and sterilize the machine first. So we pour the sterilization water solution into the top. And then we will mix it around 
for a few minutes to make sure it's nice and clean inside. And while we're doing that, we can talk about the actual mix that um, goes into our ice cream. Do we have it out yet? Okay. So the girls are gonna go get a bag of our mix. So we have, we milk 1200 cows here at North Harbor Dairy at Old McDonald's Farm. And um, most of our milk goes to Great Lakes Cheese in Adams, but we hold back a portion of it for our ice cream and for our cream line milk that we also sell here on the farm. So you can't just take raw milk from the cows and pour it into the ice cream machine. So it has to be processed into an actual ice cream mix base. Um, first, that involves pasteurization. So that is heating the milk up to remove any bacteria from it because it does come out of a live animal and then cooling it back down. So that's the pasteurization process. And then it's also a 14% cream base. Um, so the milk that you buy in the store is three to 4% milk. Um, that's how much fat is in it. This is a 14% milk fat. So here comes our mix right here comes in a big bag, a two and a half gallon bag. So you've got your milk, but you've also got your cream, 14% uh, cream. You've got some sugar in there. Um, you've got a few other ingredients like a stabilizer, um, which kind of helps to keep it all together. So you can't just take milk right from the cow and start making ice cream. You gotta have your ice cream based mix. So that's what we use here. Um, and so we're gonna sterilize for another minute or so, and then we'll start the ice cream making process. So Jeremiah, know, did you have any questions? Yes, yeah. Yeah, as we're looking at uh, this machine, so there's lots of types of bacteria out there in the world. Uh, if we think about our guts, we have healthy bacteria and we have bacteria that's not healthy. Uh, so the process that you're going through now to sterilize, that's to kill unhealthy bacteria? Because I know we use some bacteria in things like yogurt and cheeses. Right, yeah, to kill any unhealthy bacteria that might be floating through the air or that finds its way into the, um, into the machine. Um, also, with food safety, um, you do have to be careful about the order of ingredients that go into the machine. So for example, we do have to be careful about allergens. When we make our peanut butter and fudge ice cream, we have to make that last um, because of the uh, peanuts, the nut allergies that some people might have. So once we are done making that flavor of ice cream, the machine has to be sterilized to remove any peanut residue. Um, the same goes when we make our birthday cake ice cream that actually has cake mix in it. So it's a lot of gluten for example. So we have to completely sterilize after that flavor as well to remove any allergens. So both for bacteria and allergens, we sterilize. So along those lines, I have a few great questions. Um, okay. I have a great, great question um, from Layla Robinson, and she wants to know um, the machine that we have in front of you, is this all that you need with all the mixes to make the ice cream? This is what we need to make the ice cream once we get our base um, ice cream mix, but the ice cream mix itself is made at a local processor. So they have the pasteurization machine. Um, they have their own mixers to put it all together. Um, their baggers, um, their delivery guys. So that all has to be done first before it comes here and then we can make our ice cream. So as far as food handling, um, we had a couple of students notice that y'all have um, some hair bands on, but also hats. Uh, and they just wanted to know, were those adequate um, to help uh, with the food handling um, items that you need? Yes, so you'll notice um, we're wearing our chef's coats to cover our street clothes, um, just to make sure that any outside fibers aren't brought in um, to the ice cream making facility here. We have our hair nets in um, and the girls have hair nets and hats on. Uh, they're wearing gloves as well. 
so this is all in an effort um, to control any outside factors. Um, we want our ice cream to be clean and safe and healthy. I have a couple great questions from Mrs. Burns' uh, class, and they wanted to know, is the mix uh, pasteurized? And also, would it eventually go bad um, if it's not uh, utilized in a timely manner? Yeah, that's a great question. So the mix is from pasteurized milk, again, heated up to remove any pathogens or bacteria. <laughs> and um, this particular uh, mix is ultra pasteurized. So it's a little bit longer, well, quite a bit longer shelf life um, in the inner cooler. So it lasts for three months. Um, last year, the base mix that we used had to be used within 10 to 14 days and then it would go bad. So since you're so you an have, ice yeah. cream shop, um, and it looks like you have a pretty large freezer, I, I'm assuming that you make a lot of flavors. What flavor are we looking at that you're going to make, and do you make many different flavors? Yes, so what we are making today is cow, um, chocolate Oreo Wow. This was a flavor that we just kind of invented on our own. Um, we had come up with this chocolate base um, ice cream and we decided to throw some Oreos in there and it's become one of our most popular flavors. So we are making what we call cow um, chocolate Oreo wow. So first um, we're going to put the mix into our buckets which we're going to mix things in different ingredients. <laughs> We can show you um, vanilla is a really important component to ice cream making. I actually can't think of any flavor that we make that doesn't have vanilla in it. And we make our own vanilla here with uh, vanilla beans. And it takes about three months to make the actual vanilla ext extract from the vanilla beans. And uh, the beans come from all over the world. These particular ones are Madagascar vanilla. And then you can see we pulled out from the center of the bean, the actual vanilla. Um, is that the bean that's in the center? Or? Okay. And that's what gives you the little flex, but there also gives you a little bit more of a vanilla flavor. So if vanilla, anybody's ever had natural vanilla ice cream, um, mm -hmm. and you see those little flex in the ice cream, that's what's being cut out of that vanilla bean. Yeah, exactly. And the vanilla um, goes in every flavor because it brings out the flavor of whatever you add to it. So even in chocolate, you're gonna add the vanilla to bring out the chocolate uh, flavor. So we're adding the vanilla here. And then next you'll see um, we're adding an egg base as well. We don't do this in all of our flavors, but some of them um, we add it because the egg makes it more creamy. Um, almost more like a custard. So we add this egg base um, to really make it a creamy ice cream. And now we're gonna add our chocolate base. It's mainly cocoa powder. And this is what's gonna give it its chocolate flavor. And we get this base uh, pre-mixed together from one of our commercial distributors. We try as much as possible to use local ingredients as much as we can um, to use natural ingredients as well. But we do also use ingredients that are specifically made for ice cream making. And so it looks like we have the immersion blender out, which is mixing yes. up the mixture. And I did have a great question. Um, when we're talking about sanitation, and we've talked about vanilla being kind of your base ice cream that you add your ingredients to uh, most of the time, um, and we have that question, do you ever have to pull the machine completely apart to clean it between um, yes. different flavors? So, yeah, that's a great question. So we try to um, start with like a base flavor first. So this morning we made our honey vanilla, which is just ice cream mix honey and vanilla. From there, we can go ahead and make like a our caramel ice cream, or we could make our, let's see, what else is vanilla? Um, we could make our maple ice cream from there. But once we get into the chocolates, 
we have to, after we make a chocolate ice cream, we have to completely pull all the parts out of the machine, which aren't that many, and wash those and then sterilize the machine again. And we have to do that as well for strong flavors like coffee and mint. Otherwise, those flavors will be left in the machine if you don't pull it all apart, wash it, sterilize it. And you know, then anything you make after that, if you didn't pull it all apart, you would get like a mint taste to your coffee ice cream or something like that. So we have our <laughs> components put together and it looks like the next stop is in the machine. We're prepping it. And what happens as we dump this into the machine? So as we dump it into the machine, I had a little, little spillage. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream is always so messy to make. It goes everywhere. Uh, I don't know why it's, it's, it happens with chocolate, but it always is very messy. Um, so once we get all of the mix into the machine, we'll hit the mixer button and that'll start mixing it around um, more than what we could do with just our immersion blender. And then at, we'll mix that for about three minutes and then we will actually press the freeze button which we'll show you in a minute. We have a little bit more of the ice cream mix to put together. And then while she's um, putting together the rest of this flavor, we can show you some of our other ingredients up here on our ingredient wall um, that we put into other flavors. So we have like Biscoff cookies that goes in our cookie butter flavor, chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter cups. We've got the little wafers to make our ice cream sandwiches. We've got Oreos that we use, which is a, a hunt from a beekeeper who keeps bees here on our farm. We have peanut butter, cake mix, Nutella, um, local maple syrup that goes into our North Country maple ice cream. There's more honey. Um, down below, you can see our kind of sauces that we use actually to make milkshakes, chocolate sauce, peanut butter sauce caramel sauce, hot fudge. And we use all of these ingredients in our ice cream and then we put them into milkshakes as well. So you really, really enjoy that. Really your flavor choice is endless. You could really make yeah. any type of flavor. You could probably do everything and the kitchen sink. So you could probably do an ice cream with every component you have in there, which I know some yeah. of our students might enjoy. Definitely. So we can go outside, go out here and take a look at our ingredient or our, our flavor board. Um, some of these flavors we've gotten straight from a recipe book and some of them we've made up on our own. This is cow is one that we've made up on our own. Um, the honey vanilla, that's one that we got from a recipe book. Our strawberry sorbet, that's actually a non-dairy option because we don't want to leave anyone out who might not be able to have um, dairy. We use our own strawberry um, that we drain the actual strawberries and just use the strawberry juice to make that. So that's one we just came up with on our own. But the possibilities are really endless. If you can dream it, you could probably make it. Um, I've been wanting to make a peach ice cream. Uh, we make a blueberry cheesecake. Last fall, we made a pumpkin cheesecake. Again, just uh, we took a recipe in a book and just tweaked it to how we wanted to make it. So, I mean, you can really throw anything into the machine or at the end uh, to come up with a different flavor. One thing we have learned is that you can't put in the machine, you can't put anything that's gonna get ground up or else you'll lose the chunks. So if you put Oreo cookies in the machine, they'll get ground up. Um, then you're gonna have Oreo flavored ice cream, which is fine. But if you want those chunks, you got to add them in at the end. Uh, so we learned that chocolate chips can go directly into the machine because they freeze. And so they don't get what I like to call pulverized. So once we go through uh, the freezing process, it's about 14 minutes. We'll see how we pull the ice cream out of the machine and then add the Oreos. So as we're waiting on that, um, we have lots of students want to know Miss Julia, about you and your favorite flavor. Okay. Yeah. So, as you can see, uh, my options are uh, very numerous, and it is a dangerous place to live and work. Let me tell you, when you like ice cream, 
Um, but depending on the day, cowlick chocolate is one of my favorites. I can show you that one. That contains Nutella. Um, so it's chocolate ice cream with the Nutella mixed in. We, we label it as a containing nuts because Nutella is a hazelnut. So it's not good for anyone with a nut allergy. You can see it almost looks like a fudgesicle. This is one of my favorites. Funny story, when we first started making ice cream, we tried to make this flavor and we put four pounds, the recipe called for four pounds of cocoa. So we put four pounds of dark chocolate cocoa in the mix and we got mud basically at the end. Um, dark chocolate cocoa tasting mud. So then we learned that by cocoa, they actually meant like hot cocoa. So Swiss Miss um, cho hot chocolate mix. So that's what we use for this one. This is one of my favorites is um, the cowlick chocolate. And then some days if I'm not feeling chocolate, I might wanna do the Carl's Caramel. This is named after my grandfather. So it's salted caramel, mostly sweet, but a little salty, just like he was. Um, and you can see we have the caramel swirl in there. And the, we put the caramel right in the ice cream machine to make a caramel ice cream and then add the caramel swirl. So that's one of my favorites. I like the honey vanilla if I'm having pie or um, an actual, you know, birthday cake. And so, yeah, my options are really, really endless here. I do oh. tend to come over in the evening and steal some. Every now and then. <laughs> so that being said, I, I think our Q and A is blowing up, and everybody wants to know, uh, Miss Frigo, the latest. Um, can they get your ice cream in stores? Because they are so we, all licking their chops. Yes. Yeah, so we are not set up yet um, to sell wholesale in stores. So we're only selling retail here at Old McDonald's Farm. So you can, if you're local, you can come right to our visitor center and get it during our regular business hours. Um, if you're not local, you can make a whole trip out of it, out of, you know, the day and come to Old McDonald's Farm, do all of our farm activities, eat some ice cream while you're here, and then get a pint to take home, but not yet in stores. And <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Burns class wants to know, do you make other things like ice cream sandwiches? Yeah, so let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things that we make. Excuse me. And we do have the ice cream turning and freezing behind us. So yes. I think it's about 14 minutes that we're looking at. Uh, so we have some ice cream sandwiches. Here's some chocolate ice cream sandwiches. These are also a new favorite of mine. Very easy to raid those at eight o'clock at night. Um, and we also have some ice cream that we've made for scooping, mainly for milkshakes. Um, and with our milkshakes, you can create any flavor combo that we have here. I had the girls on Saturday make me a milkshake with chocolate ice cream, hot fudge, and peanut butter sauce. We made a Biscoff cookie caramel milkshake. Um, this weekend, we will have our own farm fresh strawberries so we can make a strawberry milkshake with our own strawberries. So those are some of the other ice cream products that we sell here. So it, it looks like you have quite a small freezer there. Um, and I, I think you're probably gonna make quite a few pints or a few gallons of ice cream. So yes. do you just keep the ice cream there in those little freezers or is there another place that we would go once we get the ice cream out of the machine? Yes, so while we're waiting for the ice cream to come out of the machine, we can take you to go see our really cold, really big freezer. It's really important when the ice cream comes out of the machine to get it right packed into the pints or half pints and then put right in the freezer. So as we'll see in a few minutes, it comes out in a soft ice cream consistency, but um, it needs to be brought down to a negative five to 15 degree temperature really quickly. So we'll come out here to our walk-in freezer it's very humid out, but you can see that the temperature in the freezer is minus 12. This is where everybody wants to be on a hot day. And I know we're pretty close to Canada, but that's uh, Fahrenheit, correct? Fahrenheit, yes, minus 12 Fahrenheit, um, you know, which is the common temperature here on a winter day. 
So when you go in the freezer, it is feels like uh, it's January here. So we'll go ahead and show you our walk-in freezer. So once we pack the ice cream into the containers, we just head right into the freezer, stack it, try to keep it organized as best as we can. And it'll take about one to two hours for the ice cream to go from a soft ice cream consistency coming out of the machine to a to fully hard ice cream. And I have a great question from Ms. Turek's class. Um, thinking back of the Nutella um, and seeing all these pints and they wanted to know if you use like a name brand like Nutella in your ingredients, do you have to put the Nutella brand on your um, label? That's a great question. So because we're only selling retail right now, we don't have to um, have a label with all of the ingredients. We just have our brand on the container and the name of it. If we were selling wholesale to a supermarket or to a, like uh, a local food store, we would have to list all of the ingredients that are on or that are in the ice cream. And we would have to do, if we got to a certain level of selling ice cream wholesale, we would have to have nutritional facts as well. So we aren't quite to that level yet. Yeah, so since it's sold in-house, um, right. You don't have to list the ingredients, but if it's if you started to sell to other ice cream chains or the grocery stores, then you'd list those ingredients. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your brand. You just don't make ice cream there. Um, we right. saw the farm the last three weeks. Your milk goes out and gets processed, and then it comes back to you, not just in cream for the ice cream, but some other products. Yes, so here uh, we do our own beef, which you might have seen in the little tour of our walk-in freezer. So ice cream on the left, beef on the right, keep them separated. So we raise our own beef here. We also sell our own cream line milk made from the cows here at North Harbor Dairy at Old McDonald's Farm. So chocolate is by far the most popular. We sell whole white milk as well. The chocolate outsells that 10 to 1. Especially when people are visiting here for a fun day, they want to take home chocolate milk. And when we talk about our brand, so we have the cow with uh, the 183 logo. So we came up with this brand about 15 years ago. Um, 183 is a very special cow from the farm. That's her name. She's Miss 183. And if you took a tour of the dairy, you probably talked a little bit about the ear tags that are on a cow. So that um, distinguishes the cow with her name. She's, her name is her number. So 183, she was a really special cow. She was one of the first in our herd here at North Harbor Dairy when we started um, the dairy 20 years ago, when it became North Harbor Dairy 20 years ago. She was one of the first cows in the herd. She was one of our highest producing cows. And at the time of her retirement, she was the oldest milking cow in Jefferson County. So she was really special to us. She got to retire here at Old McDonald's Farm uh, where she lives out the rest of her life in luxury until she was 19. So 183, we decided to put her ear tags on our logo to forever memorialize her and remember her as a special cow to our herd and our family, our dairy farm and Old McDonald's Farm. And so you'll see our cow logo on throughout all of our products and all of our merchandise that we sell here at Old McDonald's Farm. And I think that's a great segue um, into your inquiry boxes. So many of you all received some blank pints um, and that wasn't just to look at pints and get an idea of that measure. We like to work cross curricular with New York Ag in the classroom. Um, and mm -hmm. work with agriculture and different content areas. So we really wanted you to use your ELA skills and create your, your have your students create your own brands, much like they have here at Old McDonald Farm. You know, create a story behind your brand. And we would love to see those and have your teachers email those to us. For those teachers that didn't get pints, uh, you can just whip out a sheet of blank paper um, <laughs> and incorporate some of that math and measure out some uh, some squares and rectangles. And we'd love to see what y'all come up with. 
So once we've had our pints, what other things do we sell? What other sizes do you sell? Right, so this is a pint, 16 ounces of ice cream that we hand pack into this pint. Um, this is kind of your take home size, but certainly anyone can eat a pint in one single sitting. Um, I mean, I've been known to do that myself. <laughs> uh, this is a half pint, so eight ounces, a little bit more of a single serving. Um, technically it's two, but you know, I'm not the food police. And this is our three ounce serving. So three ounce cup, definitely a single serving, great for kids, but also great for adults who want to, you know, just have a taste of their ice cream after their meal. Um, and we have our, our labels here on our tops. And I'm being told that the ice cream is ready to come out of the machine. So let's head down check this out so, so we put already... it we put it in as a liquid um and now we're seeing it's coming out as a semi-solid semi-solid yeah so yep about 14 minutes ago we put it in as a liquid now it's coming out as a kind of your what you might think of a soft ice cream texture um but it's going to freeze into a hard ice cream once we get it into that nice big cold freezer. And she's also mixing in the Oreos because again, we don't wanna put the Oreos right in the machine because the machine would pulverize them. And you still want those chunks in there when you're eating your ice cream. So we mix them in as it comes out of the machine. We do that with, um, for example, when we make caramel ice cream, our caramel variegate, that's what makes the caramel swirl. We swirl that in as the ice cream is coming right out of the machine. So we have a lot of classrooms want to know, um, you mentioned that you make ice cream once a week, but how many, how many, um, how much ice cream do you make on ice cream day at Old McDonald's Farm? So one batch of ice cream makes 40 pints. Um, we uh, can make anywhere from four to 10 batches a day. Um, and so we're making anywhere from 160 pints to 400 pints. It depends on how much we've sold and how much we need to make for the week uh, to sell here at Old McDonald's Farm. If the girls are ready for a really long day of ice cream making, we'll try to get those uh, 10 batches out. So we, yeah, we can make anywhere from 160 pints to 400 pints in a day. And, and we do that once a week and we're making ice cream 26 weeks out of the year. So you can kind of do the math. In Mrs. Turek's class, we have another great question is uh, how, how long will it um, last in your freezer? I think my response would be whoever gives ice cream a chance to go bad in the freezer. Yeah. But <laughs> How right. long do you think your ice cream would last in the freezer? Yeah, I mean, once you bring it home, it's gone by the next morning. If it's not gone by the next morning, you're having it for breakfast. Um, but because this is a homemade ice cream, it's not a commercial ice cream. I would say no more than two months in your freezer, especially if you're opening and closing it. Uh, commercial ice cream is going to have a lot more ingredients to keep to make it last longer where this is a homemade ice cream, we try to use the least amount of ingredients as possible and try to keep it a bit more natural. So I wouldn't keep it more than two months. So we see the ice cream coming out of the machine. It looks like we're spinning so we can get the maximum amount of ice cream in that um, big old jug there. Where do we go next with the ice cream? Do, is that go straight into the freezer or is there another step before we put it in the freezer right so we will head over and watch the girls pack the ice cream we're making what we call babies or our three ounces today these are a really good seller for us with our customers that visit old mcdonald's farm so they're scooping it again it's like a soft ice cream consistency but it'll freeze into a hard ice cream once it goes into the freezer once they get their tray full they're gonna snap a lid on each of them and then head out to the freezer for the ice cream to freeze. 
and it, the Q and A looks like at this moment uh, a miniature job fair because all of our students want to know if you're an employee at Old McDonald's Farm who scoops ice cream <laughs> and makes ice cream, do they get a discount on ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they certainly love being taste testers. Um, while they're making it, we have to taste every batch that comes out of the machine with, you know, a, a brand new clean spoon. Um, so they love taste testing and yes, all of our employees get an employee discount on the ice cream and the milk. Well, it seems like there's a lot of jobs to get from that calf, um, to the scoops that we're seeing scooped right now. Um, I, thinking over, we've seen, uh, a hoof trimmer, we've seen veterinarians, we've seen cattle handlers, um, educators, uh, ice cream makers. When we're thinking about developing flavors, is there a food science? Is there a way that you can go into a career where you test, taste test ice cream? Oh, there's definitely food science careers. There are food scientists. I have uh, visited some food uh, science facilities before in other states. Um, where you develop uh, flavors for various dairy products. And you wouldn't even think of um, some of the products that food scientists that work on dairy also work on. For example, Cheetos, uh, those, the cheddar flavoring on the Cheetos, those are developed by food scientists, but specific to dairy. Um, and then if we were to sell our ice cream in stores, we would have to get it uh, with nutritional facts on the on the container. So there's a food scientist that analyzes any product and comes up with the nutritional facts that's in it, like calories, fat, uh, carbs, sodium, etc. There's so many different careers uh, when it comes to dairy, from the farm all the way to the store and everything in between. And I think we've even seen things like technology. So we've seen robotics. Um, and I'm sure there's some drone usage. So if you're looking to get into a, a career as you're getting older, um, you don't necessarily have to be on the tractor as many people see, but there's a lot of opportunities. Um, so we have a lot of students want to know what is your best uh, flavor, selling flavor? What is the most popular flavor? So this flavor that we're making right now, cow, chocolate Oreo, wow, that's our most popular flavor. Um, with kids, uh, birthday cake is also another really popular kid flavor. Uh, with adults, I would say honey vanilla um, to kind of go with some of your pies and uh, cookies. That's a great side ice cream. Last week, we made black raspberry chip, or as we call now, purple cow. And that was a huge hit last week. So we'll keep doing that one. That's a, that was really popular. Um, and when we have our fresh strawberry ice cream this weekend that we're going to make with our own fresh strawberries, people will definitely come, come in for that. And we have Melinda wants to know, thinking about possibly making ice cream, um, what is the difference between milk and cream? So the, when you have your milk that comes from the cow, um, when it goes to a processor to get bottled, uh, the milk that you buy in the stores it's going to be anywhere from skim milk to whole milk, which is a three to 4% milk. Um, also, when your cheese uh, contains a certain amount of cream in it or fat. And then when you make skim milk, for example, they take all of the fat off the top of the milk. They skim it off. And so that fat that was skimmed off the milk to make skim milk becomes the cream. And so that gets added back into the mix to make ice cream to make it a 14% ice cream mix. Well, Julia, our time is up um, and we want to thank you and definitely thank Emma and all of your staff there at Old McDonald's Farm. And most importantly, the stars of the show, all of those beautiful dairy cow that you have in the, in the barns behind us. Thank you so much. We want to thank all the teachers and students for joining us. Uh, congratulations. You're almost through um, such a unique year. And we hope that y'all have a great summer and will join us next year. And Julia, we look forward to possibly seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, everyone, uh, students, teachers, near and far. Thanks for joining us.